Indochina is now only a far-off memory. But curiously, images that are symbols of colonial exotism still fascinate travelers, bringing to mind Asian sophistication. Rice paddies, women in cone-shaped straw hats, temples overrun by the jungle, golden-roofed pagodas, junks, sampans, and the Mekong, the fascinating Mekong. I too dreamt of traveling through Cambodia and Vietnam, but not having the soul of an explorer, I decided to embark on board La Marguerite, a luxurious boat sailing the sacred waters of the Mekong. Back to the 20s, heading for Indochina. Shan is La Marguerite's director. Here, we are at his place. Well, almost. This boat was built in 2009, so very recently, in the Anfu Naval Shipyard in Saigon. It has a capacity of 92 people with 46 cabins. It's 71 meters long, 12 wide, a boat that's easy to find your way around. There are other boats sailing on the Mekong, but La Marguerite is the only one with this fabulous decoration, inspired directly from colonial styles. In the main lounge, the light filtering in through the big bay windows shows off the warmth and delicacy of the exotic woods. A wonderful old world atmosphere. I can just see beautiful Asian ladies dressed in colorful silks, strolling the decks on the arms of naval officers in white uniform. When you walk into this living room that is named after a majestic city, you are in Saigon. You're immediately reminded of the colonial era. This boat is a mixture of luxury, conviviality, traditions, and service. Service that's very grand, but very natural at the same time, because we're in a country where people are extremely friendly and also extremely attentive to clients. The wonderful service, the quality of the Asian cuisine, the comfort of the cabins. To be able to afford all this, I had to break a few piggy banks, of course. Almost 6,000 euros. Yes, it's a fortune, but dreams are priceless. In fact, for me, the real luxury is seeing the countryside go by. I feel like a child turning over the pages of a beautiful storybook full of pictures. La Marguerite sails on its way. I go down this beautiful wrought iron staircase. This elegant steward discreetly leads me into one of the most beautiful cabins on the boat. What a nice guy. My cabin is very comfortable, but this grand suite is something else. 41 square meters large, with a big bay window opening onto a private balcony. There are only two suites like this on board. 
subtle harmony of forms and colors. The yellow and the white materials go well with the powerful red of the exotic wood. My woman's eye is very sharp about the little details, about the accurateness of some of the fittings, like this magnificent 20-style telephone. The little flowers you see everywhere, like a leitmotif in the decoration, remind me that I forgot to tell you. This boat is named after the novelist Marguerite Duras, who spent part of her childhood in Indochina. This suite is really great. A double bed just for me, the little balcony to sit on and have a drink at sunset. But what I like best is the bathroom. Taking a shower with Indochina as a backdrop. For me, that's really luxury. I love this wrought iron staircase that goes between the boat's four decks. It's a real work of art. I guess I'm not the only one to go up and down the staircase several times a day, and sometimes for no real reason. Sliding my hand slowly along the magnificent mahogany handrail, I just can't help it. It's my glamorous side. Several times a week, Dushan, the cruise director, organizes special evenings in the lounge. On tonight's program, an evening of traditional Khmer dances. It's a happy, relaxed evening. This is the type of luxury that suits me perfectly. There are 38 crew members on La Marguerite. Sailors, cooks, cabin and restaurant staff, 
and of course the captain, who kindly invited me onto the bridge, or the pilot's post. And then there are the guides that accompany the passengers every day in small groups to discover the most beautiful places in Cambodia and Vietnam. And it's all included in the price of the trip. It's a very exotic voyage. You can visit the most remote villages on the Mekong. You can cast anchor almost anywhere along the way. You can even decide to change your mind at the last moment and go to a different village that might be more interesting. That's the great advantage on this boat. With one meter eighty of water draft from the floating line to the bottom of the boat, La Marguerite can, in fact, dock safely wherever she wants to. Back on board for an afternoon of relaxation, zen. There are two massage cabins on board. You pay for a massage, but the price is very reasonable. So why play hard to get? All right, that's it. I'm having one every day. Back to that staircase. Madame Van is Vietnamese. She helps Dushan with all the administrative formalities. A luxury boat sailing in a communist country is not a simple affair. But remember that before they were ever communists, the Vietnamese leaders were above all businessmen. Madame Van opens the door to one of the most beautiful rooms on the boat, the library. We're in the boat's library, where we have, of course, a few photos of the novelist Marguerite Duras. Her most famous novel, The Lover, takes place in Vietnam. That's where we decided to name this boat after her. 
the decoration of this room is directly inspired by the style in the era when Indochina was a French colony. The ceiling and the exotic wood floor give a very warm feeling. This beautiful young girl is Marguerite Duras. At the time, she was living with her family in Sadik, a little town on the Mekong Delta. There are a few houses from colonial times left, including the Chinese house, described in The Lover, Marguerite Duras' famous novel. This is a dream. Now, Indochina is not just a name on a map, yellowed with age. It's colors, smells, smiling faces, and landscapes. I don't remember how long I've been gone, but days don't matter anymore. Every crew member does his utmost to make my trip as pleasant as possible, and with kindness and tact. And that's a big part of the luxury on board La Marguerite. Knowing how inquisitive I am, the steward has let me see this cabin, a junior suite, 26 square meters. Apart from a few little differences in furniture and fittings, I find the same atmosphere and feeling of charm in the grand suite as in my modest little cabin. Modest? It is nonetheless 20 square meters. is almost over. The steward has left an evaluation form in my cabin. I can answer all the questions easily. There's just one point that I want to make. The food. For a little while, the lounge becomes a classroom. The chef is giving a lesson in Vietnamese cooking. Today's lesson is on how to make spring rolls. They may not be master chefs yet, but there are clearly some special hidden talents among the passengers. Two hours later, and one deck down, I go into the restaurant just as the staff are setting up for dinner. It's a sort of ritual in which even the most insignificant detail, the placement of a glass or of a fork, becomes crucial. theatrical setting, Madame Van steps onto the stage for a second time. Here you're in the Mekong restaurant, which can accommodate up to 92 people. 
The restaurant offers international, Vietnamese and Cambodian cuisines. On days that we offer Cambodian cuisine, the restaurant staff wears traditional Khmer clothing. For Vietnamese evenings, the Ao Dai and turban, traditional Vietnamese costume, is worn. The composition is just right. The colors are in perfect harmony. The costumes are elegant, so are the models. Everything comes together to give the impression of luxury and perfection. The decor is set. The kitchen staff arrives to add the finishing touch of color needed to this monochromatic world. I'm at the theater, admiring the artist's work. Cambodian dishes and Vietnamese dishes. This one is Vietnamese. It's called chai yo. These are spring rolls. They're stuffed with a mixture of pork, cucumber, lettuce, chives, and shrimp. Now, those are nems. They're stuffed with chopped pork, wrapped in noodles, and accompanied by minced pork on skewers. We use bamboo skewers to fry them. My trip is almost over. The long white silhouette of La Marguerite slides along the waters of the Mekong that slowly become enveloped in the golden light of the setting sun. Lying on my bamboo sofa, I profit from these moments of happiness for as long as I possibly can. Luxury, calm, delight. Like many people, I have long had Charles Baudelaire's words in my mind. They had been dancing in my head, looking for a home port, for a kindred soul. From now on, they will remind me of this trip to Indochina, on board La Marguerite. <laughs>